Welcome to Southport. Southport is renowned for two things. First is the notion that it's a seaside resort where the tide seldom comes in. And secondly, it has a prestigious shopping boulevard that is the envy of many a seaside town. It is said that Napoleon Bonaparte stayed in Southport and so impressed was he with this wide boulevard that when he eventually became Emperor of France, he directed his city planners in Paris to create the avenues of his capital along similar lines. And yet, as we will see, recent years have not been kind to this once highly regarded centre of Southport. Back in 1985, Southport movie makers, or rather Southport Cine Club as it was back then, made a film about Lord Street on Super 8 Cine Film. It was entitled Walk a Gentle Mile. It presented a rather soft focus and almost reverential view of this popular street. Much of the charm of Lord Street lies in its many garden areas. This one outside the art gallery is about midway along the street and is an ideal spot to take a rest or as a meeting place for friends or family. The Atkinson Library and Art Gallery, with its interesting stone carvings, was built in 1878. Over the years, Lord Street has had a succession of bandstands. This one opened in 1985 and is well used by a variety of bands. These fine Georgian townhouses in Wellington Terrace are some of the oldest buildings in Southport, dating back to 1817. A cafe has existed here from the 1920s, catering for people wishing to quench their thirst while watching the world go by. A scene reminiscent of a Parisian boulevard. T.R. Hypens have been trading in this building since the beginning of the century, and their beautifully restored veranda offers a glimpse of Lord Street in its Victorian heyday. The family business of Boothroyd started in 1823 in a converted cottage where the art gallery now stands before moving to its present site. The designs for the columns which support Lord Street's famous verandas were brought to this country from the towns of America's east coast by the cotton magnates of Lancashire. Wayfarer's Arcade was formerly Burton's Arcade. It also has a good selection of quality shops where you can window shop at leisure, protected from the elements. Southport has long been known for its gardens and floral displays and from one of the town's oldest florists, visitors can take away a memory of the colour and fragrance of the resort. Where else can you find a street so straight and of such majestic width? Of gardens and fountains. Of shops and cafes. Of such varied and imposing architecture. And today is Southport's famous Lord Street. Those halcyon days of Lord Street seem to have passed on, and the scene today is sometimes a little bleak, as it is in so many high streets across Britain. Of course, shoppers still enjoy the walk along Lord Street, and if the weather turns wet, then the arcades and verandas are a welcome bonus. The reasons for the decline we see along the length of Lord Street are many and varied. The frontage of this once grand hotel speaks for itself. Coaches still bring day trippers to Southport and over the years it has been the Lord Street shops that have drawn many to the resort. Some must leave feeling very disappointed.
I understand that you've visited Southport many times over the years. I have, yes. And what would you say are the key changes you've seen? Of the shops and Lord Street itself. Well, it's the, it's the shop, all the shops that have shut down, you know, that used to be here. It used to be a beautiful street. Uh, good shops. All right, they were expensive shops. But it was a lovely seaport. It was nice. Yeah. You know, you bring the children. And they really enjoyed going around all the shops. And it's not as enjoyable as it is. It isn't, no. no. I think it's really gone. It's not, how can I put it? It's not as bright and as clean looking as it used to be. So they've taken the good shops and they've put a lot of charity shops. And how do two young shoppers spend their money shopping in Southport? So you, you tend to shop alternative places in Southport other than Lord Street? More like independent shops, yeah. like, like local business owners like, who um, either selling like clothes or like maybe jewellery or just general like little like cute kitsch little shops. <laughs> I think it's like more affordable shops for our generation because like yeah. it's like Beals is quite expensive. So. Do you have an experience of shopping in Wayfarer's Arcade? Yeah, no, they have a nice music shop and a nice sweet shop there, so we yeah. go there quite a bit. Yeah. That's our really own independent. Yeah, stuff. that's yeah, that's what it's like. Quite, quite nice. And they have a nice jewelry shop. We usually buy our birthday presents. Yeah. Our friends. You mentioned shopping online. People go into the shop to physically look at the clothes, try them on, and, and then they go online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, have you done that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the shops are still here, but not the ones that made Lord Street so popular and appealing. Local people and day trippers alike will be drawn to Lord Street because of its speciality shops, those small, often old family businesses that sold old books, antique furniture, model railways and dolls houses. Serving a rather niche market, these shops often sold goods which could be bought nowhere else. At the same time, a visit to Lord Street would always include window shopping in an expensive upmarket dress shop or shoe shop. Thank you. Only looking. When parking on Lord Street is so difficult and increasingly expensive, how easy it is to take the car just a mile or two further on to one of the out-of-town supermarkets, where most things can be bought just a bit cheaper and parking is free. And of course, for local people, the new shopping centre in Liverpool is just 40 minutes away by train. Someone who has seen all these changes and continued in business is Anthony Parkinson, whose men's tailoring shop, Lapel, has been in Wayfarer's Arcade for 33 years. So give me a flavour. What was business like when you first started? Uh, business when I first started was, to be fair, was, was easy. I had no idea what I, what I was doing. I must have just hit, hit lucky and opened at the right time. And back in the 80s, early 80s, it was a good time. How has the, the landscape changed for you? Uh, business is harder now. Is there difficulty in find, um, finding uh, new customers? No, I've got all the old customers. They still right. come. They right. still come. Maybe some people have had hard times and don't spend as much money as they used to. Mm -hmm. So what, what, if, if you could paint a picture, what, what, do you have a typical uh, customer? Or are there, are there a range of... Um... My customers are sort of grown old with me, if you will. And I think they just like what I do. I look after them. I know them, them. I know them by... I know their names, their families and everything. Yeah. I, don't know, yeah. I have three generations of, in, in some families that all, all right. come and buy stuff off me. Other businesses around the Catty have, have, uh, have ceased trading. Um, so what would you, would, would you attribute your relative longevity to? Um, a lot of perseverance, you know, not giving up in the bad times. But I think just trying to offer something that people like and just being, being in touch with what people want. And if you, if you do that, wherever you are, People sometimes say, oh, you know, Southport's not a good town or Wayfarer's Arcade isn't a good place to be. If you offer the right thing and offer the right service, people will find you mm. and, they'll, and they'll keep coming back. What would you say are the uh, dominant uh, threats to the, uh, the, the, to the success of your business? Uh, out of town, big out of town shopping place centres like Liverpool One, Tr Trafford Centre, where people can go and they can spend the day there, they can park for free. Mm. People come to Southport, they have to pay to park. I have a lot of customers who come in and, and halfway through they say, oh, we have to go now, the car's running out. Um, internet sales as well. We're now going inside in what must be one of the largest charity shops in the country. For many years it was the trading premises of Woolworths on Lord Street. Now it's the preserve of the British Heart Foundation. 
We're now talking with Steve Roberts, who's the area manager for British Heart Foundation. Steve, looking at the store here on, on Lord Street, it is, certainly seems to be quite a sizable store. Can you give us a, a concise overview as to how the store has developed since it first opened here on Lord Street? Uh, the store opened around about uh, four years ago now. And it has been a very successful store in, in those four years, not only in contributing towards the success of the British Heart Foundation, but I think also in uh, contributing to becoming a uh, integral part of the community here. And can you determine why this particular store is so successful? One of the uh, reasons is because we are very good at getting stock here uh, in in Southport, very generous in the, in the way that they give, um, and we will consistently receive over ten thousand pounds worth of gifts of stock each and every week. Now you mentioned the, the generosity of people. Is that reflected in terms of the, the staffing? Do you have, for example, people um, volunteering their time to to be um, occupied to be Manning the store? Absolutely, yes. We have uh, uh, the way our stores are set up, we have paid staff within our stores, we have a paid management team and paid sales and warehouse assistants. And that normally uh, um, uh, is, is something around about 25% of the, uh, um, the, the hours that uh, is needed within a store to produce that. And the other 75% of the hours come from the local community, from volunteers. In terms of the, um, the profile of the shopper, the average, or if there is an average person, it, can you identify a sort of typical shopper who might come into your store? That's what's great about this business. I don't think there is a typical shopper. We get people from all walks of life. We, we'll get people um, that are just maybe uh, um, buying their first home or starting to rent their own uh, their first home. We'll get people that uh, wanting to. Uh, um, change their furniture just because they want to do that. We'll get uh, um, business people coming, we will get people that will come in um, and will buy uh, goods from us because they want to uh, sell it on on eBay. And has that the type of or the, the, the characteristics of the shopper changed in accordance with how the economy has, has changed over recent years? Has been, have they been a constant? Well, no, I don't think so. I think it's pretty constant. I mean, I, I think that the, the way that the economy has been in, in recent years. Uh, has helped towards the success of the store, that people are always looking for a bargain. How does the charity shops fit in within the overall context of, of the British Heart Foundation's operations? Um, we've now got over 170 uh, and we've expanded in those nine years uh, in, in the face of a, an economic uh, uh, recession. Are you able to say what, what proportion of the total operation the, the, the uh, charity shops for? I think that it's round about 25% of our income. Right. Um, of our net profit income comes from our uh, from our shops. Right. Thank you very much, Steve. In that conversation, the area manager gave us a very clear indication of the importance of these shops, both to the financial viability of the charity and to the local community. The criticism has been fairly voiced that there are too many charity shops along the length of Lord Street. Clearly, charity shops have their place. Customers enjoy shopping there, and with a bargain to be had, these shops will often help with the family budget. Valuable as these shops are, the question remains, how many are too many? It's not as if Southport isn't working hard to promote itself. It is currently screening a TV advert across the northern regions of ITV. For a fabulous family day out, Southport has it sensationally sorted. From roller coasters and rides, to a buzzing beach and a perfect pier. Plus shopping, dining, family friendly hotels and much more. Southport has it all. Visit southport.com. Rod and Wendy Wright, employed by the council, spend each day welcoming the many visitors who stream off the visiting coaches. Each visitor is given a Southport passport with helpful information and vouchers. The coach driver, likewise, is given a driver's passport in which there are various incentives for him to bring his coach back to the resort. The recently refurbished and transformed Atkinson Art Centre and Library has become one of the most popular visitor attractions in Southport. The borough councillor for this ward, David Barton, has grown up in Southport. His family business has been in Lord Street for three generations and Councillor Barton believes the people of Southport can do more. He wants a return to civic pride in which everyone plays a part. Walking along seeing the empty shop units, which is it's reflective of the inactivity trade-wise of, 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 the, of the, the life of Lord Street. What can be done then to, to restore some life into these empty shop units? This all comes back to our civic pride. We have to put more back into the community. Now, seeing this change for myself, I had to do something. 
that was what spurred me on to get involved politically in order to make a difference to my town. I've, I've got a history of volunteering. Well, at the moment, uh, I work very closely with a lovely lady, Mrs. Polly Morris of the Lord Street and Bloom Volunteers. This is a real fine example of what we need in Southport to bring the town back to life. Her efforts, they need to be replicated across the town if we are to recapture that. It's the small things that really make the difference. That caring disposition, whether it be maintaining your shop front veranda, uh, jet washing the balustrades, whether it be the local authority, volunteers, local businesses on the high street. If we can start now to make that contribution, we are known for our fantastic array of flowers. I mean, we have the Southport Flower, Flower Show, show each year, yes. we have the Air Show. Many people do come, and it's not just the elderly. You take the average person on the street. What do you uh, associate with Southport? Well, at one point in time, we have the Proud Shops, which can come back, and I've already started as a councillor my own efforts to help bring that back into place. But flowers, brightening the place up, making the town an attractive place for all to enjoy of all ages is key. You've, you've been spoken in the press about the um, maintenance of the verandas and glass canopies. Absolutely. So what's, what is it's your key. concern about that? I mean, there are, th those are very attractive properties. Not too long ago, if, if you go back to 2006-07, if we had an empty shop, that would be snapped up within a few weeks. Now, you see an empty shop front, very neglected, sad looking to be honest people or are people going to spend their money on that you have to maintain what you've got whether it be such as selling a house you tidy your house up to pass it on to the next owner it's the same here councillor barton told us about the many volunteers who tend the borders and floral displays along the length of lord street we're now speaking to members of lord street in bloom which is a volunteer gardening group who tend the gardens here in lord street first of all Pauline, how did the garden group first set, 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 get set up? It got set up five years ago when Seton Council um, stopped funding the urns along Lord Street. Um, I decided to take it upon myself to plant up the urns to keep the town looking colourful. It's when Pauline first started this, um, Pauline was the guerrilla gardener and she did it secretly and nobody knew who this who this magic gardener was and every evening you know another another urn would kind of appear like made yeah. up wouldn't it we've yeah. had tools and little kisses off the bed but we've also had tools of um, Asda, Sainsbury's and Dobby's of the tools you yeah. know Sutty's plants um, they're based out on the Tarleton Road they provide all the plants plants that we use in the summer for the urns and the gardens and where do you uh, safety, where do you use the safety store in my shed up? <laughs> <laughs> so, how many volunteers do you have in total? Um, I think between 30 and 40. Um, we have really, really good weeks. Um, we had a, a fantastic week planting up the beds further along on Lord Street, when I think we had about 20 volunteers. Mm. And 20 volunteers doing an hour's gardening is a huge amount. Um, and I have to say as well that uh, Southport councillors, I'm a Southport councillor, we have made some contributions as well via our area committee to support obviously Lord Street and Doom volunteers. And, and without volunteers, we wouldn't have the flowers that we have now. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. The, the beautiful way that the, the, the group's organised is that you can do a little or you can do a lot. And I think that's that's the whole sort of success behind it. Sharon, you're a volunteer. Yeah. So, as we've been involved for three years, and um, Pauline contacted me and asked me to get involved. So we've donated like compost and tools and time. So we come down most weeks and we go in a few hours. Vicky, you're a volunteer. I am. Yes. And what what do, what do you get out of the experience? Um, we have a lot of our customers come and sit out here, and um, the comments that get fed back to us. Work and calling and their volunteers that are doing, are doing it, they say it's fantastic, it's brilliant. And are you a gardener yourself? Part time. <laughs> I'm not an expert, but as I said, we learn a lot of calling. <laughs> a far more structured organisation whose remit is to work on behalf of the business interests in Southport is the organisation called Southport Bid. 
We're now talking with Andrew Sloman, who is the bid manager. Andrew, can you tell me, uh, give me an overview as to what the, the bid is? Okay, okay. Business improvement districts are um, a project in which the business community of a defined geographical area essentially take over the responsibility for um, improving, for driving uh, that centre forward, for instilling projects and activities that are going to give it a brighter future. What um, type of businesses are actually in, in involved in, in, in the bid? Practically every business in a geographical area, there are close to 1,000 businesses involved. All the hotels, all the restaurants, all the shops, all the attractions, all the sports clubs, they're all involved. See a particular area of, that needs attention, how, how, from origin to completion, how one project might, might, might that work? From start to finish, we, we would tip pick as we did a street like East Bank Street, um, which is a mixed-use street. It's not a heritage in a heritage or conservation area, but it is a key gateway. So it welcomes many, many visitors into Southport. But we wanted to, um, to do something to ensure that as people are driving into Southport, they understand they're driving into a resort with plenty going on. Uh, so for the first time in, in a decade, we've put hanging baskets all the way down the columns there, and we've put banners. And they're promotional, simple promotional banners welcoming people into the town, promoting what it has to offer. Just to put it into some sort of context, what would you say the, 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 the principal factors that have contributed to the, in recent times to the, the relative decline of Lord Street as a, as a shopping thoroughfare? One thing that Southport um, has experienced is the same as practically every town and city in this country and many in Europe and in America, which is a change in retail, a change in shopping patterns, um, the growth of out of town centres originally um, uh, did have an impact. Uh, you've got the growth of internet. Now retail has to move at those times and adapt and change. Um, but also um, somewhere like Lord Street will probably change in other ways and different sorts of businesses. Andrew there has given us the big picture of bids, hopes and plans for this town's future. But how does a small business just starting out see the future? We're now talking with Susanna and Sarah from the Remedy Gin Bar on Lord Street. Congratulations on launching your new business. I gather it started just very recently. Yes. And how have been the first few weeks of trade? Busy, yeah. Very busy. <laughs> it's it, been really well received, actually. Yeah. We're really surprised. So what, what feedback have you had from, from people? I think the gin's gone down well. Yeah, I've sold lots of gin. Given the um, economic state we're in now, and particularly the um, the, the state of, of Lord Street, some people might say it's, it's a, a brave act to start a new venture. I think it was aimed at a particular target market, so that young professional sort of, I think we expected it to be sort of mid-twenties to early fifties, and we are getting a, a, a wider range than that, so we are getting young people that want to come and play games, and um, it's ranging also to sort of big groups of men who want to come and try gin, um, and I think even the day trade, you know, we're right outside the coach stop, so we get lots of people that are on day trips as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's probably um, it's outside of the, the market that we thought we were going to hit. You mentioned games. Actually, people bring games with them, or do you supply them? No, we supply them. We have a range of games here for people to play, including uh, sets, of, sets of cards, and dominoes, uh, backgammon, Scrabble. Scrabble, and also a range of adult colouring books. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Therapeutic. All right. oh, I understand that. <laughs> you know, we've had people come in for, they've, they've had a shopping day and they've had a little break and they've come in for a little gin and tonic before they carry on. Mm -hmm. So it seems to have gone down really well. Yeah. A lot of people declare that we don't normally drink in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I think we drink aware as well though. Yeah. You know, we have a selection of cold water on all the time and we, we put fresh water and glasses on every table. So, you know, it's not the kind of place where we're, we're not offering shops and we mm. don't do offers on our alcohol, yeah. it's literally a sort of more relaxed approach to alcohol. Nice. Oh well, there is success for the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's end on that positive note as a new business on Lord Street looks to the future with a real sense of optimism. Maybe it is that we have to accept that Southport and Lord Street especially will never again be that soft focus Victorian resort we all knew and loved. In a sense, it has to find ways to reinvent itself if it is to face the challenges of a different age and a radically different way of shopping. But within the Southport and Lord Street community of shops and businesses, 
there is both an optimism and a strong determination to meet that challenge. It is very much based on a community spirit, a re-emergence certainly of civic pride, whether it be the local councillors, people giving time as volunteers, businesses willing to contribute materials or release employees to help, and of course nearly the 1,000 businesses paying their levy to support the efforts of the Southport Bid Organisation. It is never going to be easy, but the building blocks are there to make a significant change and even a transformation of this once prosperous and much loved boulevard. We leave it with an Italian visitor we met on Lord Street. South Park and Malta Bella. <laughs> South Park is very beautiful. <laughs> okay. We think she has it just right. <laughs>